I just wanted to have fun. And that was like playing football was like the most fun I've had during a young age and even even now. So uh, my earliest football memory would probably be back when we was in Charlotte. Yeah, we remember just like yesterday, right? You want to, you want to tell it? You want to tell it? There was a guy who was playing junior varsity, um, little league football. And there was a guy named Casey Lee. This one particular guy, his name was Casey Lee. He was your height at 10 years old, <laughs> right? <laughs> your height at 10 years old. Taller, he had a nice run coming out the backfield. A little misdirection, come back. He going, he running to the sideline. He waiting on the cutback. I see it. I ran the ball, got up the sideline. Okay, here comes Casey Lee. Haul and tail, man, Casey Lee. Bam, smacked him, man. Uh, he hit me so hard, I ran into the Gatorade stand. Knocking him dead into the Gatorade container <laughs> on the sideline. <laughs> and so, did he sit there for a little bit? He sat there for a little bit. They took him out. They took him out. And there. next next court, he was right back at it. Back at it, and then he took one like 98 yards <laughs> to the house. <laughs> that was that was not a good feeling, but man, it, was, it was football. My dad just kind of threw us in the sport of football, and I happened to fall in love with it. And ever since then, my dad has put me through tremendous workouts and workouts himself from other guys just to get me to the point where I am today. It's still really surreal for us. Um, see, just seeing him get off the bus, seeing him on TV. Like it always takes me to his childhood, to where we was in the backyard and I'm handing them off. Right, I'm teaching you how to read the A gap, the B gap, right? Your splits, you know, and so, and I was like, man, wow, he still wild me, even me, right? <laughs> so, I'm like, man, this is this, this is wild, it's crazy. Let's hope it's a scary, spooky, gory afternoon for the Northwestern Wildcats uh, on this Halloween as the Hawkeyes try to rebound from a tough loss at Purdue a week ago. Uh, let's get rid of the false starts and the fumbles. That's a good place to start, right? Yeah, I mean, those are all mental errors. You know, you worry about it if it's physical errors because you can't correct that. But you can correct mental errors. Only Kirk Ferentz has more uh, wins in the, in the Big Ten uh, among active coaches. So it's Kirk and Pat Fitzgerald 1-2 uh, in that category. And here's the kick. Lands beyond the end zone. The Heartland is brought to you by Iowa's Corn Farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association and Iowa Corn Promotion Board. You may think Iowa grows corn, but the truth is corn grows Iowa. You'll see that anybody looking to the south today trying to find the ball on a punt or on a pass until that sun goes behind the grandstands, it's going to be brutal. And here is Torrey Taylor, who averaged 40, almost 45 yards a punt at Purdue. Had an outstanding game last week, and he sends a sidewinder, and it's looked up into the sun by the uh, punt returner. It's knocked away. Iowa has recovered. It went right through the... Uh, the receiver's hands, and he was—he never saw it. He was looking right into that sun. You so uh, ably described in your keys to the game. Yeah. Big moment for Spencer Petras here. Get him in the end zone. Goes to the end zone. It's caught. Is it a touchdown? It is. Oh. Touchdown, Iowa. Touchdown, Brandon Smith. Had to make sure that at least one foot got down on the black, and it appears it did. Well, and that ball came out of the sun, too. He went back and caught that over the defender. And, I mean, he had no chance either of seeing that ball for very long. Great reception. And here's Ramsey on a keeper. He's rattled as he oh, balls oh, out. Oh, the oh. Hawks are on it. The Hawks are on it. The ball came out, and Van Balkenberg jumped on it. I, I was just in the middle of saying uh, Ramsey's going to get tattooed a lot today if he keeps running the football. He did there, and the ball popped out. That was a run all the way, Gary. That, was, that, wasn't, that wasn't a scramble. Oh, it was a cold uh, run. And they snapped it to Bowser, not to Ramsey. Right back at the 45-yard line. Zant, uh, Zach Van Valkenburg got on the football. Petrus wants to go for it on first down. Has a man caught. 
on the far sideline. It's Amir Smith-Marset. The Hawks are pushing him out of there pretty good right now. 7-0 Iowa midway through the first quarter. Draw hand off to Goodson. He's at the 5, at the goal line. That's a touchdown. Touchdown, Iowa. Man, what a lightning quick draw play that was. Petrus and Goodson. Hand in glove. What a great call at the right time and blocked perfectly by that Hawkeye offensive line. You, you can imagine they had some tough meetings this week after those uh, false starts last week. Hey, you got hit that way. Oh, 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 crazy. Oh, oh, big, 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 Eight thirty-six to play first quarter. The Hawkeyes on top early, 14 to nothing. Oh, they tried to sweep the sh short side of the field, and Chauncey Golston says, I'll have none of that, and slams down Drake Anderson to the ground. Hawks need to get a stop here on third and long. Ramsey's looking down the middle of the field. Plenty of time. Now he's going to tuck and run, and down he goes. A, a gain of maybe a yard as the pocket closed. And once again, it was that tandem of Golston. Davion Nixon got in there, and, and they had some fresh bodies out there on third down. Makai Sargent's in the game. Petrus, good protection. Crossing pattern caught. First down. Out of bounds is... Nico Regani and a first down for the Hawkeyes. Up under center is Petrus. Fakes the handoff to Sargent. Comes the, to the weak side. Has a blocker. And on the horse and riding downfield is Sam Laporta. Inside the Northwestern 40. Down to the 38-yard line. Second and long. Petrus play fake. Stands in there. Throws. Hits a cutting Smith on a, a deep slant inside the Northwestern 25-yard line to the 23-yard line. So the Hawks will... Settled for the three. Keith Duncan, who was a perfect two for two last week, is now three for three on the young season. And it's 17 to nothing, Iowa. And here comes the jet sweep. A handoff and a touchdown. Kyrick McGowan. First and ten Hawkeyes at their own 45, leading 17 to 7. Into the wind, Petrus going to throw, across the middle, caught a snare job, a heck of a grab by Tyrone Tracy. Northwestern's got their block formation. Now they back off. Here comes the kick, and it is good. He just tucked it inside the right upright. Oh, I thought that thing was going to drift too far to the right. <laughs> Ramsey's up under center. Power eye. They hand off to Brown, and he dances into the end zone. Here's the snap, the spot, the kick is on the way, and it is certainly long enough. Oh, and it hit the crossbar. So we're at halftime. The Hawks have the lead, led by 17 at one time. They lead it by 6, 20 to 14, as Northwestern has fought back. The Heartland is brought to you by hy V, where there's a helpful smile in every aisle. hy V proudly supports the Iowa Hawkeyes. University of Iowa Healthcare, changing medicine, changing lives. Now the sack happens and the ball's out and Northwestern jumps on it at uh, back at the 19. That's a loss of 11. Davion Nixon got in there. We'll call it a sack courtesy of Mershman Seeds. He fought his way through a double team, just swam his way to the quarterback and knocked the ball loose. And the loss is of 11 back to the 19. Nixon, a big time play there. Second down. That's Davion's second sack of the young campaign. Ramsey claps his hands, hands the ball to Bowser on an end sweep, and he's knocked out. Terrific open field tackle. Amir Smith, Marcet, who had four catches in the first half, splits wide right on a play fake. Here comes the uh, delayed blitz. Pass is intercepted. Spencer Petrus throws a pick, and out of bounds with the football goes the Northwestern safety, Brandon Joseph. Two tight ends, one goes in motion. Here's Brown. He is over the goal line this time. And that is a uh, touchdown, Northwestern. The Wildcats have caught the Hawkeyes and tied it up at 20 with that power run game. The Cats are going to keep it on the ground and nothing there. Good job of the Iowa front there. Drake Anderson was immediately latched on to. Hawks trying to get the ball back. Fake on the draw handoff. Ramsey now is going to try and run down the middle of the field. Davian Nixon was spying on him all the way. Heck of a play by the tackle. He's had a great game. Yeah, that's a, an all Big Ten performance we've seen from him the last last week and this week. Second and five for the Wildcats. See if the Hawks can produce some negative yardage here. Empty backfield. 
Ramsey to throw, grabbed onto, yeah, he's sacked back at the 21. Good job by Chauncey Golston. He gets sacked. I believe that's number three on the day. Now they need a stop on third and 13 from the 21 of Northwestern. Ramsey back to pass. He's unfazed. Worms his way, squirms his way from Joe Evans. Throws downfield, and it's intercepted. Overthrown and picked off. Is that Kerner? Yep. Jack Kerner comes over from the safety spot and jumps high for that overthrown pass and picks off Peyton Ramsey. See if the Hawks can cash in at the 37-yard line. Goodson, middle run, big hole, and he gets close to a first down inside the 30 of Northwestern. Goodson goes in motion. Here's Petrus looking, good protection, and then overthrows, and it's intercepted. Overled the receiver, and it's picked off by Northwestern. They go heavy package with multiple tight ends, an eye formation, and a great tackle by Benson, who's had a heck of a game. Wildcats. Ramsey turns, hands off to Bowser, and he's going nowhere. Loss of three. Down he goes. 28-yard line of Iowa. No timeouts. Hawks on the run. Here's a pass deflected, picked off by Gallagher. Turnover is a factor again today. And the final score, Northwestern 21. The Hawks 20. Iowa drops to 0-2, uh, and, and Northwestern is 2-0. Today's broadcast is powered by Extreme Internet. Feel the speed. Feel the power. Feel extreme. U.S. Cellular is proud to be the official wireless sponsor of the Iowa Hawkeyes. U.S. Cellular, connecting Hawkeye Nation. Tyler is, um, if I had one word for him, it probably would be um, infectious. I mean, he's... He's mm. very hardworking. Yeah. Uh, he's compassionate. He's caring. He's loving. He loves service. Um, he's very selfless and and humble. Like um, he's just a really really good kid and you know human being that just happens to love football. My mom is the by the book girl, and my dad is the. the like let's say the comedian of the family he's a jokester and my mom is just like by the book but they're both very loving and very caring for sure <laughs> <laughs> very true absolutely like i'm i'm a rule follower i'm a I'm, you say we're going right we're going right he's the one that's going to push the envelope where's management and i think that <laughs> it, in terms of our children um Tyler is more like me when it comes to being a rule follower. He's going to do what you tell him to do, be where he's supposed to be. And then Taylor is more like dad. Like, he's going to push the envelope a little bit and, you know, like, let's see just how far I can get with this rule. And then Tavian is kind of middle of the road. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's that's a, probably a fair assessment. Yeah. <laughs> thing is, my dad wasn't on the uh, visit with me. It was just me and my mom, man. My mom was shocked that... <laughs> Iowa felt like home and she actually she was the one that told me that Iowa is the place for you and she could tell her and off the uh, facial expressions on my face and stuff so she my family was definitely shocked and I caught my husband uh, that night after we did a tour and I said um Houston we have a problem and he said <laughs> what I said he I think he's gonna go to Iowa he said no way <laughs> <laughs> the rest is history he just he came here, he loved it, and he never he never wavered. Coach staff is very family oriented. Um, the Children's Hospital, I love the fact that we wave at the uh, kids in the Children's Hospital to make them feel happy and home and safe. So everything was just family oriented and made me feel welcome and safe. So we're just very thankful and grateful for our family and how they just utilize his talent and just didn't throw him to the wolves, you know, put him in too fast. His freshman season, right, and got him used to acclimate to the speed of the game. You know what I'm saying? Because he did suck at blocking first. So I told him, I said, you was trash, boss. Your blocking was trash, you know? I said, you can't just sit back there and let the 250 pound running back just come bull rush you. You gotta get up and meet him. And so me and Coach Foster had awesome conversations. We got a great relationship. And I think it just trickled down, man. And we just see the manifestation, whatever it is today, man. Very thankful and blessed to be a part of our fun. For me, I think I learned the most just learning like, uh, Defensive rotation and protection, uh, that was the main thing that I had to adjust to when I came here. Um, 
Once I adjusted, it, it became pretty good for me with the help of Coach Foster and the other running backs in the room. So, I mean, we we anticipate. We didn't know because I told Felix, I said, man, we don't know, you know, how Tyler's talent is going to translate to the next level, right? No parent knows, right? No, and right. if a parent try to say that, they're straight up lying, right? And so you don't know how you're going to just you're gonna do you can be the best thing in high school to slice bread and you come here and you sit the bench for four years so man we're just thankful and grateful man all at the same time to where there's no credibility from us but that's taller is taller right and god gave him that and <laughs> we just try to enhance and develop to be make him even better i think the thought part of it is just knowing who you're reading and who to feel and who's the run fitters in the defense. And I think instinct is just whatever you feel that's flowing or overflowing or just staying by side is mostly instinct. But for me, I I tend to play off instinct more than my thought, which helps me a lot, so. But one thing that struck out to me was Tyler. No stage is too big for him. He's very mentally tough. Mm. And when he makes up his mind that he's gonna do a thing, yeah. like, there's no deterring him from yeah. doing it. Nothing's getting in the way. Mm -hmm. If that's the goal, he's gonna he's going for that goal with everything he has. I just want to win the team. Uh, the individual stats will come. My my main focus is just this team and me putting myself in a position to make plays for this team and win as a collective group. The Heartland is brought to you by Iowa's Corn Farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association and Iowa Corn Promotion Board. You may think Iowa grows corn, but the truth is corn grows Iowa. Athletico Physical Therapy, it all starts here. On the fade ball, uh, I knew I was getting the ball, and um, even though the corner was playing, you know, off, you know, I was just telling Spence just to it up and give me a chance because you know a lot of people you know like to talk about you know like my high jump and everything and uh you know on the field i just found ways to use that we got the look we wanted in practice so from there all about me and the center working together to get that backer in the box of blocks and for me to open up score touchdown and so the quarterback started getting flushed out of the pocket made sure i stayed in coverage because He's good, he's good on the run, and uh, saw a crosser coming over and decided to cut that and overthrew the ball, and I was able to jump up and make a play on the, play on the ball and get the interception. Uh, as a team, I think we just need to come together and just believe we could, you know, go out there and compete with anyone that we can and uh, just, just keep grinding. You know, uh, things haven't worked out uh, like we wanted them to, but there's no reason to stop now. Just keep going. Really just focus on fundamentals and the detail that we need to really work on. Um, other than that, we're one possession away from winning these games. And I think we should, we really can do that. It's just all about what we want to do and we control that, so. Uh, I think that the defensively communication is just a big part of it. I think that this this group, we do have a good group of guys and uh, I think we got, we improved from, from Purdue, but obviously there's more improvement to be there. But I think that uh, the intensity and the effort and everything's there, I think that everybody, just needs to mesh a little bit uh, better together. And I think that that's something that's kind of the focus of this week is this communication and uh, guys really growing into the, the roles that they have been placed in. This week's Heart of the Hawkeyes feature is Bill Bramley, a longtime Hawk fan who volunteers his time every year to feeding the Iowa football team. Well, we started that, like you said, back in 2010 and we, um, we met Paul at the um, team hotel at the Orange Bowl, and then we discussed to him about possibly doing a feed and feed the team, and we didn't know it quite involved in what it has today, but it's really turned out quite well. This has been a presentation from Learfield IMG College.